Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Today is uh, Monday, April 15, 2009. We're here for the purpose of the regular meeting of the uh, Elmhurst City Council. It is 7.55. I'd ask that you all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, before I ask Clerk Cyprian to call the roll, I just want to apologize to uh, those folks. Um, our executive session ran over a little bit, but uh, we were in discussing some important stuff. So I appreciate your patience. Clerk Cyprian, I ask that you call the roll. Dunn? Here. Leader? <coughs> Here. Blumsky? Absent? Graham? Here. Toledo? Here. York? Here. Levin? Here. Park? Here. Timequest? Absent? Kennedy? Here. Mulliner? Here. Brennan? Here. Sabatino? Here. Deuter? Here. Both present, two absent. Both present, two absent. We have a quorum on to uh, agenda item three. In just a moment, I'm going to ask uh, the representatives and the members of the York High School mock trial team to meet me over here uh, by the microphone. I am happy to welcome, as we do here in Elmhurst, um, when uh, one of our teams takes first place in state. And I'm happy to say that our first place mock trial team is here. I'm going to ask them to join me right over here. Best Attorney and Best Witness Award. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Were you actually the witness? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, let's slide up here to the mic. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, the this one right here, sir. Underneath. I know where that is. That's what they're here for. Fantastic. Again, I apologize for the late start. That's what happens when we got started. I would have had much more prepared for you folks. Anyway, uh, the York High School team took first place against 40 other teams uh, in the State Bar Association mock trial held at the University of Illinois on March 9th and 10th. The mock trial invitation program provides an opportunity for the students to learn what it's like to prepare and present a legal case before the Illinois courts, gain a better understanding of the justice system, improve their knowledge and skills, and ability to articulate in a reasoned and thoughtful manner. How many here want to be lawyers when they grow up? You gotta have to be more decisive than that. Let's raise them high. Who wants to be a lawyer? I see two. Two, three, okay, all right. What do they want, what they won? Well, what do you want? Oh, who, what do you want to be if you don't want to be lawyers? Oh, I want to be an FBI agent. Oh, fantastic. Okay. I want to be an agent. Finance. Finance. Civil rights attorney. Civil rights attorney. Okay. And uh, fantastic. Uh, are you on the team back there? Yeah. You didn't raise your hand. <laughs> what do you want to be? Aerospace engineer. Aerospace. God, do I feel small right now? <laughs> and you? Don't do that. That's pharmacist. Okay. Yes. Nobody wants to be mayor. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is fantastic, and I'm gonna, I, in a moment I'm going to call up uh, their coaches, uh, Amy Mueller and Beth Birchler, and then Matt, the volunteer attorney, uh, which you can probably spot. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have them call up and tell you folks a little bit about their season. Uh, but um, I do want to share with you that I took place, uh, I took part in this program at York High School many moons ago nice. um, and uh, I was awarded because I got the uh, DUI suspect to admit that he gave me his keys or the, the he gave the cop his keys which was a big deal apparently at the time which allowed me to search his trunk um, so anyway all you uh, um, soon to be lawyers would understand that anyway we, we do uh, truly appreciate uh, this is just one of the so many things I tell kids in fact I was speaking to um, 
uh, junior high students uh, last week uh, about what to do. And I said, get involved. Uh, if you're already, in, you're gonna be told to get involved for the next 20 years by old people like me. The sooner you get involved, the sooner you can say, I am involved. And this is just another example um, if you've had kids who've gone through our public system and gone through York High School, there's a night where they literally can go visit like this ungodly number, like 79 clubs or whatever. So uh, this is just another great example. Um, I love the idea that we have the ability to highlight that they're first place winners, but it also highlights some of the programs that our schools offer. So I'm gonna turn it over to Amy right now, and sure. she's gonna fill us in on the rest, and then we're gonna take some pictures. Right. Thank, you. Please, Thank please. you. Go ahead. <laughs> So first I would like to thank the Elmhurst City Council for honoring the team and giving us an opportunity to publicly congratulate the York High School Mock Trial State Champions. <laughs> Through their hard work, their persistence, and their love of competition, they've been able to hone skills that enabled them as a team to win this amazing accomplishment. As individuals, each of them have a lot of strengths that they bring to the table, but as a team, they're second to none. And so I really applaud that their efforts as a team. I'd also like to take this opportunity to give thanks to our administration, particularly Drew McGuire, our assistant principal for activities. He's been very supportive of the team in the past, and as we get prepared to go to nationals on May 15th in Athens, Georgia, we really rely on him for support and, and some financial support as well, so we're really fortunate. I'd also like to thank, we have a lot of parents here of these amazing men and women, and I would like to thank them for sharing their children with the three of us coaches. It has been an honor to work with them and to see them grow as individuals, and we're very blessed to have them in our lives, so I thank the parents for sharing them. Um, I would just like to, for everybody to um, give them their best, wi but your best wishes as we head off to nationals. We are competing actually against an international slate of teams. There's a South Korean team that will be there. There's teams from uh, some of our territories like Guam and the North Mariana Islands. So we're super excited to meet um, all of our competitors in Athens in a few weeks. So if you could give them a, a big round of applause, I'd appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind if I could lastly just highlight some of the awards that they won. Katie Klug is our um, team captain and at the state competition they give awards for the best lawyer and the best witness because in presenting a case not only do they act as lawyers but they have to perform as witnesses as well. And Katie does double duty and she won both a best attorney award and a best a witness award which is quite a feat so we can give her an applause. Andrea Garou. Um, this is her first year on our varsity mock trial team and did an amazing job as one of our attorneys and she won a best attorney award as well at our state competition. We do have um, an amazing team and we have one male competitor and we worship the ground he walks on. He keeps us grounded as a bunch of girls, so that would be Tony. And Anthony um, won a Best Witness Award at our competition at State as well. We're missing two competitors, and um, one of them also won a Best Attorney Award. So they did; a, they had a great showing. Um, the one last thing that they're very proud of, and I and I would be remiss if I don't mention it, is that at the state competition, there is an award given to the team with the best test score. Yes, not only do you present your case, you have to take a law test in the midst of your competition, and the team with the best average in this law test wins a very coveted award. Not only did we have um, the only team that had a competitor get 100% on that test, but we won the test out of 40 teams and we had the highest average, so we were really excited. So without further ado, um, I would say thank you once more, one more time and thank you for the opportunity to congratulate them. Well, we're going to take some pictures. Does anybody else want to speak or are we ready for pictures? I think we're ready for pictures. I think we're ready for, ready pictures. for pictures. All right, everybody, follow me. Parents, you can take pictures. 
Go ahead, Greg. Go ahead, kids. Enjoy Georgia. Thank you. Go get him, you guys. Go get him. Congratulations. Congratulations. Way to go. Congratulations. Congratulations. Fun and national. Thank you. It's a fun camp yeah. 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 town. Yeah. 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 Way too smart. Good job. Good job. Good luck. Congratulations. Good job, Good job. 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 Good be careful. I've never seen it. Is it good? Watch your slants. Watch your slants. We did good. Okay, uh, that covers agenda item three. Agenda item four, receipt of written communications from the public. At this time, is there anybody who has any written communications they wish to submit? If so, please raise your hand to be recognized. Any written communication? Seeing none, we'll close uh, agenda item four. Agenda item five, public forum. Um, this is an opportunity for anybody in the audience to address the council, and specifically ask that you direct your comments to the chair on any item you so choose. When your name is called, we ask that you make your way to that microphone over there next to Chief Ruth. Out of respect for the work that we have to get done here this evening and respect for others that may want to speak, we ask that you keep your comment to three minutes. Um, if you go over three minutes, I will gently remind you to wrap up. When you get to the microphone, we ask that you state your name as we are recording this. Look, Cyprian, do we have anybody signed up this evening? No, Mayor Morley, no one signed up. Nobody signed up. So nobody signed up for the sign-up sheet we had at the back of the room. However, at this time, is there anybody who did not have an opportunity to sign up but wishes to address the council at this time? Please raise your hand. <coughs> I see one person. Mr. Pagash, you're up. I haven't been around for a while. I apologize for not signing in. We just had an election. State his name. Ball Mr. Pagash, I know this yes. is going to sound redundant. Can you state your name for the record, please? Claude Pagash, 566 West Clantis. Thank you. We just had an election. I was hoping there would be a report in the local paper, but there wasn't. The reason I bring it up, when I went to vote, those running the 
booth where I had a vote and everything else were glad that I showed up because they said nobody had shown up. Kind of went uh, statewide. For some reason or other, people that have a right to vote didn't take the time to vote. Just sorry, commentary on our system of government. I also read in the local paper that uh, the state's getting involved in a little plastic building to protect vegetables. Now it's on a state level. National groups are interested. We spent two years playing with this thing. And since these people that would like to have it have taken the time to go to the state, got it in a committee, they may just jump around the state and say, what the heck? Why don't we federal, go to federal court over it? A simple plastic building to protect vegetables. Interesting, isn't it? Oh yeah, with the election, I got my new water bill. Amazing, it came in after the election. I don't think there was a need on the bill to state that the aldermen of this city voted this in. Who else would do it? So I kind of took a look at it, looked at past bills, and I made a mistake all the way along whenever I brought this subject up. What do you think the people of Elmhurst are paying for a thousand gallons of water? I guess nobody in the voted it in has any idea, do you? We're paying over ten to ten dollars, almost eleven dollars for a thousand gallons of water. See, we pay for it twice because the city charges us so they can pay off the DuPage water system. And then they take the amount and they raise it and they charge us again for the same th thousand gallons. Mr. Pagash, I'd ask you to wrap up your comments, please. So we're almost paying $11 for a thousand gallons of water. What happens to all that money, huh? City clears over $6 on every thousand. Nice piece of change, isn't it? But that never comes up in a discussion. Yeah, I know my time is up, Mayor. But the thing is, You don't tell the people that. And they just pay their bill. And you know what? For every thousand gallons you st sell them, you charge them to treat that thousand gallons, even if they water their flowers. OK, anyone else? Seeing none others, that concludes public forum. On to announcements, agenda item six. Any announcements from the dais? All been done. Yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I just want to uh, again announce that Alderman Leader and I will be having a second ward meeting uh, that will take place this Wednesday, April 17th at the fire station one at seven o'clock. Again, uh, this Wednesday at seven o'clock at fire station one. Uh, all second ward residents and any other interested parties are welcome. Thanks. Okay, any other announcements? Seeing none, we'll go on to the consent agenda. At this time, is there any item on the consent agenda? Any alderman wishes to have poll to vote no or provide additional comment? I thought I saw somebody. 
Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda in its entirety. Motion by Alderman Mulliner, second by Alderman Brennan. Clerk Cyprian. Dunn. Aye. Leader. Polumsky, absent. Bram. Aye. Toledo. Aye. York. Aye. Levin. Aye. Park. Aye. Conquest, absent. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Brennan. Aye. Sabatino. Aye. Deuter. Aye. 12, 12 ayes, zero nays, two absent. 12 ayes, zero nays. <coughs> Motion carries. On to ordinances, 8.1. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Clerk Cyprian to read the ordinance, and then I'm going to ask City Manager to state the address and the purchase price. An ordinance authorizing the purchase of property. You need that, Jim? Uh, no, I've got it. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is for a property purchase at 113 through 121 Addison Avenue in Elmhurst, and the purchase price is $2,250,000. Okay, to put this before council, I ask for a motion to approve uh, purchase uh, and ordinance as read. Motion by Alderman Mulliner, second by Alderman Toledo. Discussion? Clerk Cyprian. Done. Mayor. Oh, sorry. Um, Alderman Deuter. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the, we're talking about the Pizza Palace property. I think this is an important parcel and I like the concept of the city having the ability to influence the redevelopment of key sites. That said, I think there are a lot of ways that we can influence the development that fall short of acquisition. We soon will have a plan development process. We have the ability to offer TIF incentives. In this case, we have the ownership of an adjacent parcel. And I would like to see the city maximize the use of those tools and get as much use of them as we can before we would um, look at acquisition and really use acquisition just as a last resort. So in addition to the approach that we're taking on this, I have concerns about the high acquisition price, our ability to cover our costs for whatever period of time we hold this property, and that we're taking this action without a clear plan in place for its use or its redevelopment. So I'm not gonna vote in favor of this tonight, but if we as a council, if the majority of the council supports it and we move forward and end up owning this property, I would like to see the city undertake some type of planning exercise and do it quickly and do it very targeted on this particular parcel so that we can identify some of the viable options that exist for its redevelopment um, for the entire parcel, including the donut hole. You know, we could take the approach of putting out an RFP and just seeing what ideas developers have for the redevelopment of the site, if that's what we decide to do. Um, but we have heard from our consultants that developers are not known for their creative thinking. They, as we would expect them to, look at a parcel and think, how they, can they maximize their profit? What's the most that they can put there? And that they're not likely to be the kind of initiators of some good ideas. So if we want something neat to happen on this site, and I, I think there are lots of great opportunities for that, I think the burden is on us to really kind of lay the, the framework for something interesting to happen. So I would like to see us do some planning and I would like to see that be quick and be targeted and hopefully have an opportunity for public input. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? Alderman Bram. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was not gonna speak to this, um, but I want to concur with Alderman Deuter's comments. I'm concerned that uh, the purchase price, uh, we haven't done our due diligence to verify that this is the right purchase price for this property for the residents of Elmhurst, as well as for the development of downtown. Um, I voiced this concern in the past, and I feel um, the same about this piece of property. Um, I am, if this does move forward, I am looking forward to having an opportunity uh, to redevelop this when the time comes. Um, but I think that the purchase price for this, uh, these parcels is um, more than I would like, and especially since we don't have a basis to support our purchase price. Okay, any other comments? Seeing none, I'll ask Clerk Cyprian to call the roll. Done? Aye. Leader? <coughs> Aye. Polumsky, absent. Bram? No. Toledo? Aye. York? Aye. Levin? Aye. 
Park? Aye. Conquest? Absent? Kennedy? Aye. Mulliner? Aye. Brennan? Aye. Sabatino? Aye. Deuter? No. 10 ayes, 2 nays, 2 absent. 10 ayes, 2 nays. I have a question. We're okay. Yeah. 10 ayes, 2 nays. Ordinance passes. On to uh, 8.2. Uh, it's an ordinance. I would ask uh, Clerk Cyprian Reed the ordinance. An ordinance approving and authorizing a non-exclusive license agreement by and between Peyton Power Committee and the City of Elmhurst, DuPage and Cook Counties, Illinois. See item 7.15. No? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, to put this before council, I ask for a motion to approve the ordinance as read. Motion by Alderman Levin. Second by Alderman Dunn. Discussion? Clerk Cyprian. Done. Aye. Leader. Aye. Plumsky, absent. Bram. Aye. Toledo. Aye. York. Aye. Levin. Aye. Park. Aye. Conquest, absent. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Brennan. Aye. Sabatino. Aye. Deuter. Aye. 12 ayes, 2 absent. 12 ayes, 0 nays. Motion carries. Agenda item 8.2 is approved. On to Committee reports 9.1. I'd ask uh, the report out of Public Affairs and Safety. I'd ask uh, Clerk Cyprian to read the recommendation. It is therefore the recommendation of the Public Affairs and Safety Committee that the City Council approve returning the grant funds for the York Street and Illinois Prairie Path grade separation project back to DMMC. The committee recommends the City Attorney be authorized to prepare the necessary documents for City Council approval. Signed Scott Levin, Chairman, Danny Polumsky, Vice Chairman, Bob <coughs> Dunn. Put this before council. I'll ask for a motion to approve the report and recommendation as read. Motion by Alderman Levin, second by Alderman Dunn. Alderman Levin, your report. Thank you. Um, we specifically put this, or did not put this on the consent agenda because we wanted <clears throat> to call the report to the attention of the council. This is the um, proposal to look at grade separation, primarily, it's been called the uh, Prairie. Path underpass project, although it could have gone over York as well as under. Um, we received a grant for $1.76 million several years ago, um, and those are 20. In 2014 dollars, the project was estimated to be around $3 million. And it's not you know, when, when we get a grant, uh, we look at it very carefully where our staff works very hard on our behalf to obtain these grants. Um, but uh, over the years, as we've looked at this, we've tried a number of different techniques as a city to try to improve the safety at the Prairie Path Crossing on York. Uh, the committee, in its many, many discussions, as I, I, I'm going to guess we had, even in the time I've been on public affairs and safety, we've probably had 10 meetings where we talked about it, and Chairman Healy before that at a number of meetings. Um, but it, we were finally got to the point where we needed to make a decision, uh, even if it was to move ahead and spend approximately $150,000 in engineering costs as a feasibility study, I should say. Um, but I think that uh, talking to people who came before the committee, notably the bicycle clubs were not in favor of it. A number of other residents spoke that they were not in favor of it, both for the costs, even if we had a grant for the 1.76 out of the three, and those are 2014 dollars, um, and, and city staff uh, would look at additional grants, there would still be a significant cost to the city. Um, there were people who were concerned about whether an underpass was even appropriate there. Uh, we finally, after going back and forth on many, many meetings, uh, felt uh, unanimously that it was not worth the dollars that would have to come from the city budget to do this. Uh, we will continue to look at other means to uh, protect motorists, uh, bicyclists, I don't know if the motorists were really in danger except for fender benders, but to protect their fenders. Um, and uh, when push came to shove, we didn't feel it was a project that was well supported or that was worth the tax dollars coming from the city. And even though they're grant funds, uh, they can go to some other project. 
Uh, we cannot use them for any other project here in our city, and uh, if this report passes, then the grant funds will be given back to the grantor. Um, that's it. Alderman Dunn. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I think uh, Chairman Levin gave a very good summary of uh, how this topic has been discussed at length in committee. Uh, and we've had a lot of, uh, we've had studies on it. Um, we've had a lot of comments on it. The only thing I wanted to add is that this is also one of the development, the focused development sites. I think th uh, that's what we called those that uh, we, we just passed uh, through council a few months ago. And uh, I, the feeling was that having a, uh, pretty large hole uh, in that area might be counter to the, uh, the development of that, that focus area. Uh, but the, again, the main reason was <clears throat> the cost of the city. I think if this was 100% grant funded, the decision might have been different, uh, but it still was, it was a large amount of money uh, coming out of the um, city's budget for a uh, project that was, didn't have great support. Other comments? Alderman Bram. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in regards to this, I'm glad to see we're moving forward with a decision one way or another. As Alderman Levin has pointed out, this has been going on since Alderman Healy proposed this, I don't know, probably about 10 years ago, if not more, I don't even remember. Um, back then it was first introduced into the budget. Um, I questioned it then and I've questioned it since then. Uh, Due to the cost and due to really the viability, um, the viability from a use perspective, viability of, of how uh, much of a detriment I believe it would have been to the Prairie Path. I think the city and the committee has done a very good job with improving the line of sight in this area and doing everything within our power to make sure that this intersection, if you will, uh, the Prairie Path with York Street, um, is as safe as it can be, and I'm glad to hear that we're continuing to evaluate on a regular basis to see if there's anything else that we can do. Um, I think this is the right thing to do. Um, it's been debated, as Alderman Levin has stated, uh, prior to him being the chairman of this committee. Uh, I would guess probably 15 to 20 times, if not more. It's had significant debate, and I'm glad that uh, we're going to move forward with a decision of not to do anything, which is usually not a, the type of report that we issue, um, and al allow those do dollars to possibly utilize elsewhere, either in Elmhurst or outside, uh, but more importantly, looking at other projects and applying for uh, grant dollars for other projects that might be a, a more viable solution. Any other comments? Clerk Cyprian. Done. Aye. Leader? Aye. Polumsky, absent. Bram? Aye. Saluto? Aye. York? Aye. Levin? Aye. Park? Aye. Conquest, absent. Kennedy? Aye. Mulliner? Aye. Brennan? Aye. Paptino? Aye. Deuter? Aye. 12 ayes, 0 nays, 2 absent. 12 ayes, 0 nays, motion carries. Agenda item 9.1 is approved. On to reports and recommendations of appointed and elected officials. Mayor Morley, that's me. A couple of things. Um, first of all, we did have an election on April 2nd, and I want to say thank you to everybody uh, in Elmhurst who ran for parks, schools, and for city positions. Um, it takes a lot of guts to throw your hat in the ring, I know. Uh, and uh, just Making the effort, signing up, filing is a pretty big deal. So thank you to everybody who participated. Congratulations to those uh, who actually won. Uh, special congratulations here to Alderman Sabatino and Alderman Toledo, who had contested races, but are, will be joining us again. Um, uh, that leads me to Jan uh, I'm sorry, May 6th. We are swearing in everybody who gets a new term. So um, as uh, as I hope everyone's aware, 50% uh, of the council is up for re-election every two years. So we will be uh, having a swearing in on May 6th. Uh, certainly encourage you to bring your families. 
Um, and uh, join Lonnie for punch and cookies afterwards. Uh, also, um, Clerk Cyprian, I believe, has already sent out requests for um, committees. Um, it is the duty of the mayor and the city council to reset committees after every election, and that is my intent to do so. I think we have five so far out of the uh, 14, so that tells me there's nine of you left. I would ask that you please uh, submit uh, so we can get that going as soon as possible and not uh, have a hiccup in uh, the work that we have to do for the city of Elmhurst. Uh, friendly reminder that vehicle stickers are on sale now for uh, all residents of Elmhurst uh, who own vehicles and they need to be in place on your car by May 1st. Um, we had an inadvertent um, issue on this report, on our uh, agenda this evening. Uh, council will recall that two weeks ago, um, there was a motion made to postpone a report out of DPNZ, a PUD report out of DPNZ to time certain or date certain, which is allowed by Robert's rules, which is what we did. Um, then we promptly forgot to add it to this agenda. Um, but the good news with Robert's rules, all 679 pages of it, is that it allows for situations like this under limits on postponement and their postponement and their relationship to meetings and sessions, 11th edition, page 187. If a matter that has been postponed to a meeting or an hour during a meeting is not disposed of before adjournment, it becomes part of unfinished business. Um, as council is aware, uh, anything that's not stated in our code, we defer to Robert's rules. What that means basically is that the report that was postponed to date certain, technically it's transferred to other business. It will be before us in two weeks. So apologies to uh, the motioner and uh, folks who voted for it, but that's the way we handle it. It's appropriate. I've checked with our attorneys. Uh, we will be bringing that before council again for discussion. Uh, I was going to say in two weeks, but it's actually going to be May 6th because uh, we have a fifth Monday. And last but certainly not least, I will continue to remind the residents of Elmhurst to sign up for our Water Smart program. Go on the line, go to our city website, sign up. It will save you money. And that's it for me, city manager. Thank you, and uh, I apologize also for missing that on the agenda, and we'll make sure that it's on the May 6th agenda. Uh, three things. One, over the weekend, we, uh, the college sponsored the recycling event. Uh, we had some staff members there, and so I appreciate everything that uh, both the college and the city uh, collectively put together uh, to make that happen. We don't have the numbers yet, but as soon as we get them on uh, number of visits and amount of um, recycled material, we're, we'll be happy to share that with the council. Um, second item is this Saturday starts our spring cleanup. The 27th, excuse me, not this Saturday, the next, yeah, the 27th, you say that, April 27th starts the spring cleanup. And uh, that is according to which day your refuse is normally picked up. So on the 27th, it will be the central part of town. On the, on the 4th of May, it will be the south end of town. And on the 11th of May, it will be the north end of town. All that information is on our website if you uh, need to get to it. And then the last item I have is uh, a request an alderman uh, made to uh, talk a little bit about the electric aggregation program letters that are um, out there. We have fielded a number of calls here at the city, and I know MC Squared has fielded a number of calls as well. Those are two great resources that, that residents can use if there's any confusion. Uh, the reason that there might be confusion is because there were five different versions of a letter that went out depending on your status of how you get electricity, who the supplier is. I should say who the supplier is, not how you get it, because we all get it through ComEd. It's the supplier. So uh, the, there were five categories. Uh, the first, I'll say, uh, letter A was residents that received a letter that uh, stated MC squared was going to switch them from ComEd to MC squared. Letter B was residents who were going to stay with ComEd. Letter C, letter C, D, and E all had to do with residents who have signed up for another program prior to our aggregation program. So if they opted to get their uh, electricity from a different supplier, which is about 3,000, a little bit more than 3,000 residents or 3,000 homes, received a letter that they um, 
they, had an, they were able to opt in to a program with MC squared. So letters A and uh, everybody could opt in if they, if they did not get letter A, but in letter A, you must opt out. Um, so um, the people who received letter A, where they were going to be switched to MC squared automatically unless they opted out, received a second letter, and that may add to the confusion, from ComEd that confirmed that they would be switched. So if you, if you got a second letter, that means you will be switched. If you did not get a second letter, that means you're going to stay where you are. I think that's about the simplest way I can put it. Uh, as I said earlier, if there's any questions, you can call. We recommend calling MC Squared. But if you did not receive that letter, you can always call City Hall, and we're happy to answer the questions. That's all that I have, Mayor. Thank you. Hello, New York. Just one point of clarification. The city manager explained it perfectly. Um, if you do uh, get a letter saying that you've been switched to MC Squared, there's no change in your electricity price. It stays the same. Um, so there's no cost difference uh, doing it to utilize the ability to get um, renewable energy certificates for the entirety of the electricity supply in Elmhurst. Any other reports? Alderman Mulliner. I just want to mention that uh, over the weekend, the <coughs> Elmhurst Model Railroad Club turned 50 years old and they had a great open house. Um, there, are, there were at one time three railroad clubs in Elmhurst, now we're down to two. Uh, the one, one is only 50 years old. Uh, it was a very good open house. A lot of people showed up for it. Uh, if you have an opportunity, if you have not gone to the railroad club, it's on First Avenue, uh, right by Red Arrow. It's down in the basement. It's open on Fridays in the evening and Saturdays in the afternoon, and it's well worth your time, especially if you have children. It's well worth their time to see the, the operation. They do a terrific job, and they do a great job of showing you around the facility. So congratulations on 50 years for them. If you haven't been there, it truly is a hidden gem. You'll be shocked. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You'll be shocked when you go down there and see what they've put together. Any other reports? Seeing none, we'll go on to resolutions. 11.1, uh, I'd ask Clerk Cyprian to read the resolution. A resolution approving and authorizing the execution of a local public agency agreement for federal participation by and between the City of Elmhurst and the Illinois Department of Transportation in connection with the resurfacing of Spring Road from St. Charles Road to Vallette Street in the City of Elmhurst, Illinois. See item 7.12. Okay, to put this before Council, I'll ask for a motion to approve the resolution as read. Motion by Alderman Kennedy, second by Alderman Deuter. Any, uh, any comments? Alderman Bram. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I am going to support this resolution. I, uh, there was a report that uh, coincided with this resolution earlier on the consent agenda. Um, but I did want to voice some concerns because I had a conversation for some reason this past Friday, this jumped in my head, um, that um, about 10 or 11 years ago, we just repaved Spring Road. Um, and I confirmed that with uh, Kent Johnson. I believe his title is city engineer. I'm not sure. Um, and I'm a little bit concerned that we're repaving it after only approximately 10 years. Um, in past discussions, the city has said, you know, anywhere from 18 to 20 years should be the longevity of any, any street in Elmhurst. And here we're applying for dollars to utilize appropriately. We should always look for uh, STP funding anytime we can get it. But for an area of town that's only been re repaved about 10 or 11 years ago. So I wanted to vocalize that concern. Um, I'm going to support it. I, I believe, you know, the staff has stated that they feel that it is showing where, um, but I, I would like to, I guess, make a request, if you will, on why we would need to repave a street only within 10 years. Because um, if that's accurate overall from a city perspective, the plans that we have in place are 18 to 20 years. Um, so are we going to need to adjust those plans on some of the roads within town um, at a very much, a very quicker rate than we currently have in our plan? Okay, any other comments? Alderman Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to highlight the reason this is on the uh, agenda tonight is because we need to take action to get an answer back to IDOT so they can go through their letting process and ultimately get this uh, project done uh, still this year. As it relates to the timing and um, the previous time that uh, Spring Road had been repaved, 
reality is city staff looked at it. There's a significant need for it to be done at this time. That's why the project was prioritized and ultimately put in front of Public Works in front of all of us tonight. Thank you. Okay. Clerk Cyprian. Dunn? Aye. Leader? Aye. Blumsky, absent. Bram? Aye. Paluto? Aye. York? Aye. Levin? Aye. Art? Aye. Conquest, absent. Kennedy? Aye. Mulliner? Aye. Brennan? Aye. Deputino? Aye. Reuters? Aye. 12 ayes, 0 nays, 2 absent. 12 ayes, 0 nays, agenda item. Uh, motion carries, agenda item 11.1 .1 is approved. On to other business. Any other business? Entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Alderman Mulliner, second by Alderman York. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.